Welcome to the House of Ham. This is Bob WV7W, and today we're going to finish up the QDX build, and we're also going to do some testing of the device once it's complete. So we'll start off with the front panel LED. This is the indicator that shows you that the device is on, as well as showing you um, when it's transmitting. So what we want to do is take the shorter lead and bend it straight down. You want to do this carefully so you don't break it off of the package, but you want to bend it straight down. And then with the longer lead, and I used a pair of needle nose pliers for this, what you want to do is you want to bend that so that it fits in the other hole. And this can be a little bit tricky to get it just right. It took me a couple little tries at this to get it to the right spacing. Um, but that, and you need to make sure that when you put this in, that it um, sits flush onto the printed circuit board. And go ahead and solder it up. Uh, remember that it is a solid state device, so don't keep the heat on there too long. And when you're done with that, go ahead and trim off the excess leads as we have in the past. Next, we're going to put on the USB connector. So uh, get it fit in there just right and make sure that it's flush with the board. And then once we do that, you're going to solder the four little pins first. And once you've soldered those pins, you want to make sure that the socket is flush with the board before you go and solder the outer two pins. These outer two pins, you want to make sure have a good um, connection, not so much for electrically, although it does provide shielding, but also it gives you the mechanical strength as you're plugging and unplugging the USB connector. Next, we're going to solder on the PTT line socket. Um, this is a new addition for revision three. And what this allows you to do is to key an external amplifier. So this is uh, probably not going to be used by most users, but it is there if you do want to uh, get a little more power out of your radio. Now we'll do the DC power jack. And this has fairly large holes uh, to accommodate the large pins, but I recommend that you really get a good solder connection here since this is providing all the power for the radio. It doesn't draw a lot of current but having a good solid connection on all three pins is a good idea. Once you're sure that the uh, connector is sitting flush with the board, go ahead and uh, fill out the rest of these um, pins and make sure you get a good connection all the way around. Finally is the BNC jack for the antenna. And there's two little pins, which are actually your pin and your shield. And then there's these two larger pins. And the two larger pins um, hold it in place. And here again, just like an, on the uh, on the USB jack, I recommend you get a good solid mechanical connection with your solder to hold it in place so that it doesn't break free on you. And, uh, and lose your connection from putting the antenna connector on and off. Before I go and use this with WSJTX, I wanted to show you that you can get into this with a terminal emulator and you can go through some of the configuration settings and do some tests on it. So here is the configuration. I did not change anything from the default. Um, next, we can go to the band configuration, and I changed two things on mine. I changed 80 and 60 meters to be disabled. I don't have antennas for those two bands, so I don't want to transmit on them. But everything else is default. Uh, next, we're going to do an audio filter sweep, and this kind of shows you the um, performance of the audio filter and um, I don't, this looks very similar to what they have in the manual, so I'm assuming this is good. Um, and then uh, did that for 40 meters. We're running it again for 30. It looks very similar for 30. And then uh, again for 20 meters, it looks pretty much the same. Next, we'll go ahead and do an aura filter sweep. And uh, according to the manual, you need to do this into a dummy load, which is what I'm doing here. And so we'll run the 40 meter one and it looks good. It's all the way at the top for 40 meters. And then we'll go ahead and do it for 30 meters. And 30 meters looks like it could use maybe just a little bit of adjustment 
in the uh, radio to uh, to get that peak more along the center there, but I'm probably not going to mess with it. And then uh, 20 meters um, looks very good as well. So let's jump into WSJTX. And before we can use it, we need to do some settings. So go to the radios section. And I've already done this, but you need to set uh, the Kenwood TS440, uh, the right serial port for your computer. The baud rate doesn't matter for USB, but I set it to 9600, 8, 1, and none. And then cat control, um, none for the mode, fake it. And then when I test cat, it comes green, so that's good. And when I press the test PTT, it causes the radio to transmit. And we have to go to the audio tab and make sure we have the right sound card settings as well for this to operate properly. Here again, I've already done this, so no need to change anything. And now that we're done with that, let's see this bad boy in action. And you see that I'm immediately getting uh, good signals on the waterfall, and I have signals in the band activity window. So that's a good sign. Uh, first time I tried this, I didn't get anything, and I thought there was something wrong with the radio. Turned out it was just really bad band conditions. So um, then I go ahead and send out a CQ. Um, not really expecting to get anything back on this, but I want to be able to see it in PSK Reporter. I have sped these sequences up some, so I'm not wasting your time watching the stuff come through, but you can see that it is working. So a uh, quick look at PSK Reporter, and we can see that we have lots of stations hearing us. So there again, a very good sign. And a quick switch over to 30 meters, and we also see that we're getting good activity on the waterfall, and we're getting good uh, reports back into the band activity window. So um, 30 meters typically does not have as much as 40 and 20, but there is activity here. And so that there again, a very good sign that things are going well. We'll go ahead and throw out a CQ. And to my surprise, I got a response back. So went ahead and finished up the QSO and I have my first QSO with the QDX, which is kind of cool. It's kind of interesting that I got that on 30 meters and not on 40 or 20, but hey, I'll take it. And switching over to PSK Reporter on 30 meters, and we see that we're getting activity there as well. And finally, we'll jump on over to 20 meters, and we got good uh, reports in the activity window and good um, indications in the waterfall. So 20 meters is working as expected as well. 20 meters was the one band that worked really well even the first time I tried it. The band conditions were such that I was able to get reception on 20 meters. 30 was a little weak and 40 was just gone completely. So that, but that, like I said, that was band conditions, not the radio, because I did absolutely nothing to the radio. Um, everything is as default and with the build as shown in the rest of the video. And a look at PSK Reporter for 20 meters, and you see that we're looking good here as well. So overall, this radio seems to perform really well. So what do I think of the QDX? I think it's a great kit. It's a lot of fun to build, and it works really well on the air. So if you're looking for a digital transceiver that's not going to break the bank, the QDX may be just what you're looking for. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please consider hitting that like button. It gets us out to more hams. And if you'd like to find out when my next video comes out, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, 73s.